looks good. Looks good. Let's get let's get let's get this party started. Hello everybody. Welcome. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening. If this is your first time in my kitchen, welcome. This is where I cook. This is not where I eat. It's not one of those kitchens where you sit around and eat. There's really nowhere to sit. Sometimes I drag a stool in here while I'm waiting for stuff to happen on baking streams. And we might do that because we have a special baking stream that might not take that long. And I may cut it a little short if I'm finished very early. But because what I'm thinking is, um, because what I'm thinking is going to be pretty quick, I might start a second quick thing and like double task to show you some two of my favorite recipes, or at least the beginnings of them. Neither of these things will be ready on stream, so you don't get to watch me eat. But uh, tomorrow, <laughs> if, you, if, if what you're really looking for is the, the taste test, I will do that tomorrow on stream. So the idea here, tea. the idea here is I have been dying to make from the Hearthstone cookbook, which uh, still available, much recommend. It contains like bar foods, snack foods, cocktails, but also some desserts. It's got a cheesecake recipe. It's got cupcakes, it's got those donuts that we did. Good stuff in here. This one's also cheaper than the WoW cookbook. And I keep adding <laughs> this Ungaro tar pit pudding to the, to the pole and it kept losing. And then the more times I kept adding it, the closer it got to winning. It was kind of an eternal second place finish in the Patreon poll. And I finally did a, po a poll of all the second places and I finally got to make this. So. This is a chocolate pudding that contains beer. It contains stout beer. It's got egg yolks. It's got chocolate. It's got cinnamon, ginger. Um, and then the way they want you to serve it eventually is lined in layers with like crumbled chocolate graham crackers and then topped with whipped cream. And I felt like I couldn't do this without um, doing, going all the way. It also said one of the ingredients is candy bones and rocks, which it does say is optional, which is good because they're harder to find than I thought. I figured it's Halloween time. It's October. If there was ever a time for me to find candy bones in the store, it would be now. So we went to the store and we dug through the Halloween section and I managed to find two things that may or may not work. So the first one is I managed to find a bag of just Halloween candy, but in spooky shapes. I can't put anything with peanut butter in there also. Oh, <laughs> I didn't wipe the counter before I set this down. I can't put anything with peanut butter in it because I uh, don't want to and because I don't want to poison my, my nut allergenic spouse. But there's tombstones. The theme is like Ungaro tar pits, which are usually like dinosaur bones. So this doesn't have any bones. It does have uh, Hershey's cookies and cream fangs. And I did eat one of these and it's basically just a rectangle. It's got a little bit of a fangs imprint on it, but I don't know if it much looks like teeth. I don't know if I want it to look like teeth. <laughs> but you know, you might find teeth in the tar pits of Ungaro Crater. Favorite recipe from the WoW cookbook is a toss up, I think between the firecracker salmon and the Mulgore spice bread. But out of the dessert section, the conjured mana strudel is also really good. And I've made all of those things multiple times by now. <sighs> uh, where would I buy this cookbook? Uh, both of them are on the Blizzard gear store, but what I would recommend that you do is check Amazon instead because Amazon tends to sell them a lot cheaper and it's the same book. I don't know why that is. Um, it looks relatively official, but you can, you can get it much cheaper if you do it on, through Amazon. So with the pudding, the idea here is that we're making a cornstarch thickened pudding. So we are going to be whisking together Usually with cornstarch thickened stuff, what I'll do is I'll, ta I'll take some of the liquid out, dissolve the cornstarch in a small amount of liquid and slowly incorporate that into the larger part of the liquid, especially if I'm doing like a dinner sauce. But what it wants me to do here, and I shall follow the directions because I've never made this before. I like to follow directions first. And then if I feel like I can improve it, I do that in like subsequent attempts. So they want me to whisk together in a large saucepan off the heat, sugar and cornstarch. And then we're going to add milk, beer and egg yolks, whisking until well combined. So what I should probably do is like, measure my ingredients and then um, show you guys this beer. <laughs> it wants us to use stout, which is a type of beer that often has malty and chocolatey notes. And I know this because I read the labels of a bunch of stouts last night. We went to the store to get something because we don't really keep beer around. 
um, and and I was gonna I was trying to look for something that had like chocolate as a flavor note, so I would know that it go it would go with the chocolate pudding. Turns out they all say that. So what we ended up getting, let me grab a bottle of this. We ended up picking up, and I don't need very much of it, but we ended up getting an oatmeal stout. Um, this might be a Portland thing, I don't know. They all have very fun labels, but we ended up picking this because it was one of them there. And it says it has notes of dark chocolate and roasted oats. And while I don't like beer, I do like oats. Um, I had a tiny bit of one last night, and I think it's gonna work. So that's the plan for the stout. Hello from Brazil, hello. Uh, hello from Slovakia, welcome guys, try a bit. Um, we'll, we'll get to this later. I don't know if I'm really, I had some, I had some last night. Um, I should be very transparent about the fact that while I appreciate the culture and the history of beer, and I know that people really enjoy it, I can't. I've tried. I've tried a lot. I've tried, I've tried everything put in front of me, and I just don't like it. Uh, Sablock, thank you for the three-month reset. Mm. Oatmeal stout sounds like me after I've eaten a lot of porridge. Oh, man. Every... Every morning, you gotta get those oats, they're good for you. So, okay, so I'm gonna be mixing, I guess I can just measure the sugar and the cornstarch into the pan first. Uh, it says large, so I'm, I'm just gonna use a really, we're gonna be heating up milk here, and if I know anything, <laughs> which I don't, but if I did know anything, my experience with heating up milk is it expands a lot and will boil very, very high if you get it to boiling. I think we're not supposed to boil it, but just in case, I'm gonna use the biggest pot that I have, because um, why not? <laughs> I feel as though if I'm using a smaller one, I am going to regret it. So I'm going to grab this thing and I'm going to measure in my sugar and my cornstarch. And we'll set that aside for later. So I just need a half a cup of sugar and three tablespoons of cornstarch. Um, what else did I pick up last night? I got the baking chocolate. Um, I have oats, but I'm not going to start putting oats in the pudding. Although, I mean, people add like cocoa to their overnight oats. I have oats every day for breakfast, but I've never tried making them especially desserty because I'm usually there for the fruit and I know people like chocolate and fruit together but I've never been huge on it. Usually I want chocolate with <laughs> chocolate or like you know other desserty things like caramel or maybe coffee. I can go for chocolate with coffee but fruit you know <laughs> fruit's just good just as fruit you know. All right so uh, I could level this off but it's pudding and I don't care that much. Um, that's pretty close that'll do. I will leave this out because I may need it later. And then three tablespoons of cornstarch, and that I will level off because uh, I have found, and wasn't terribly surprised because of course that's how it works, as the thickening agent. If you um, mismeasure this, you can very easily end up with either just uh, soup or um, jello, neither of which is desirable. Although jello does sound reasonably good, although chocolate jello, I don't know about that. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go for one. And we're not going to heat this or anything yet. We're, we're getting there. We're going to measure some other stuff first. Two. And three. It had started to get quite a bit chillier around here, so I dug into my closet into the winter section. I didn't bring everything up because I was lazy, but I went straight for the, uh, the Sherpa fleece lined super warm sweatpants. And I feel very satisfied with myself because I feel as though no matter what chilliness the room may throw at me or you know how however much heat I lose because I just stay still for way too long I shall not suffer because I have defended myself with the art of fleece uh tea okay so well here let's I'm supposed to mix this but I kind of wanted to shake it because I can greeting streamer hello chocolate goes great with orange or berries oranges yes berries I know that's a popular opinion you're probably objectively right I just don't like it <laughs> same microwave uh, I did not redo my hair color. I have, um, I'm just under different lighting. I really hate the lighting in here. It's very difficult to work with. I've just kind of given up on making the baking stream look any better than about this. Um, I don't even bring the best camera over here anymore because I was just mixing up all my settings for regular streams. So this is pretty much what we're working with. Also the, um, the device that connects the camera to the computer has a pretty good bend in it and may break at any moment. <laughs> and if it does, I don't think I'm going to replace it. I might just stop baking streaming. I don't think it's really, I'm, <laughs> I'm not looking for, I mean, I'm not blatantly looking for an excuse to get out of this, but uh, I would take one if it was offered. Tiny Teacup Kitten, thank you for the four month reset. Appreciate it. Also Foxy with a two month reset. Thank you very much. All right. 
I did that. I now need to combine fun. All right, so we're gonna need to separate some eggs. I don't need, making sure, I don't need egg whites for anything here. Um, smart and sustainable people would save them and use them in something else, but I don't really use them for anything except for waffles, and I'm not making waffles right now. I don't want to. <laughs> Can't make me. So I'm probably just gonna, I'm probably not gonna keep them, and then, and then chocolate. So yeah, we're just gonna melt the chocolate. We're not double boil melting or anything. We're just gonna melt it in this, so. Butter and vanilla. You know, I'm not gonna pre-measure stuff. I'm just gonna start adding stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna add to that thing three quarters of a cup of milk and then three quarters of a cup of beer and then three egg yolks. So let's just work on that one thing at a time. I know I have everything here, so that's something. <sighs> beer waffles. Mm. Uh, a knife has fallen into the stream cable. We can't do baking spoons any longer. Uh, on an air fryer in the Amazon sale. Very excited to try it. Nice. I hope, I hope you really like it. I used mine, uh, not two hours ago. I made my lunch in it. I was doing like a rice bowl with some uh, veggies and some tofu. And, um, veggies, I used to steam them when I was having them for lunch. I used to like steam carrots and broccoli either in my microwave or my air or my instant pot or something just because I wanted them to be cooked because there's only so many raw veggies I can eat before I get tired of chewing. Um, so I, I, uh, I used to steam them, but the, and, and steaming them does cook them, and it's effective, and they can taste good, but the, tex the soft texture of steamed vegetables just makes me sad. It just makes my heart cry. It's just not something I like. This cup won't help me at all. This is the wrong denomination. Um, we're going to do this one. We're going to do three quarters of a cup of uh, milk, and then three quarters of a cup of the beer, and I should probably find a can opener, beer or bottle opener, because of that. So we'll do the milk first, and again, we haven't heated this yet, but that part is coming soon. So I'm going to set this pudding in one big container so that I can serve it in smaller, fun ones later. I'm going to stop talking while I measure because otherwise I'll forget how many I've done. Two and then three. And then an equal part of stout. So it's not like a small part. It's not like just a couple tablespoons. <laughs> so last time I got an alcoholic product for use in cooking, um, I bought a port wine because the the birthday cake we made last month needed like a tablespoon for the icing and uh, we still haven't finished that one we're working on it not very fast <laughs> it's only okay but uh, I only need like a tablespoon of it so we have the rest of the bottle but this is actually gonna take most of most of this I think so here's one. Oh dear uh, two <laughs> it'll just it'll never not taste like beer I think the beer that I'll like is beer that's not beer anymore and at that point I may as well just leave it for the people that like beer and three. Okay, so I should whisk all of that together. Uh, there was one more thing I was supposed to add. Egg yolks, that's right, that's right. So let's get this mixed. Um. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, whisk, I need a whisk. And then I'll start, and then I'll start cracking in egg yolks. Uh, gladly buy a new cable to keep bacon streams alive. It's not necessarily the money, although I think they may be very hard to get a hold of. It's the, um, the $120 Camlink um, adapter. I know they were sold out for a long time once people started working from home and trying to connect their computers. Uh, it's mostly that these are, they're just a lot. They're just a lot. <laughs> and they're, they do objectively worse than my other streams, which is fine because they're variety. But they just take so much more time and planning and money to do everything. And I don't know that I enjoy them more than just sitting and playing WoW. I think they mostly stress me out. I do get to bake things that I wouldn't otherwise bake. That's a fair point. I would otherwise probably be a lot lazier and not try as many new things. But, like, if a, if a business <laughs> was running a show that had run for four years and continued to lose money and stress everybody out, somebody would just cancel it. <laughs> you know? Mmm. I like hard cider, but beer is always beer. That's where I'm at. I, too, enjoy a good cider. And I will tolerate bad cider. I'm not, I am pro cider. Although I will say that, um, you know how different forms of um, alcoholic beverages affect people differently. Cider hits me very hard and very quickly. I will get intoxicated extremely quickly with cider. I have not even a whole serving and I'm already a bit uh, inebriated. And if I finish one like serving typically, I'm, uh, I'm having a good time. 
cider so yummy the sugar hits you fast. I, that's got to be what it is. I, I find I don't really get hangovers the way I used to as long as I am staying really hydrated. And the one thing we can say for drunk Hazel is that she's a stickler for drinking a lot of water. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, it goes straight to my head. <laughs> Uh, what about baking some of your favorite dishes besides super fancy ones? I don't really like baking though. <laughs> I do, I bake because I like eating stuff and sometimes I want to eat something fresh. The actual process is just kind of a pain. <laughs> you get messy, you get sticky, you're standing, you, you need all this equipment. Sometimes uh, there's like work and then it doesn't even turn out the way that you're looking for. I don't think I like baking. <laughs> I just do it because I like eating. <laughs> You like eggnog? Yeah, um, I, eggnog's fine. I can't drink a lot of it, and I think that's the, the preferred state of things for eggnog because it's really rich, so you're not supposed to drink a lot of it. Um, I, I like it less than I used to. I think when I was a kid, eggnog was like expensive, and we would get one thing a year, and we would, um, we would have it out of like shot glasses. This is a really tenacious egg white. It does not want to let go of this yolk. Uh, we would have it out of like shot glasses, and I would take my little shot glass of eggnog, and I would sip it very, very slowly over like an hour. Of course, it would get warm, which is gross, but uh, I, I liked it at the time. I don't like touching egg yolk. I thought I did, and I don't. <laughs> this one is so persistent. Get off of there. We don't want you. <laughs> go away. Um, there we go. All right, there's one. <sighs> so yeah, I would sip it very slowly and kind of like savor the spices and everything else going on with it. And, uh, and then when I grew up and realized that eggnog either got more affordable or I got more money, one of the two, um, when I, as an adult, would buy an eggnog and we would have it between just the two of us, I'd be like, wow, I can have a bigger glass of this. That's exciting. And then I would have it and I'm like, oh, I don't like it when I'm having more. <laughs> the shot glass was the correct amount for me to enjoy and now it's not special anymore. Uh, biggest mug I own, please and thank you. It's just so heavy. It's so heavy, um, which it's, it's nice. I just can't do a lot of it at once. I don't feel good after. Uh, I wonder, all right, there we go. There's two. <laughs> Eggs are taking some time. Prefer mulled wine over eggnog? I don't know if I've had mulled wine. Does it come mulled or do you do the mulling yourself? It's like heated but spiced wine, right? That's a thing that I feel like I read about in Game of Thrones and I never actually try myself. Although I'm only, a, I'm only so-so on wine. I had a bit of a wine phase where I was like keeping a wine around, usually a boxed wine, because I can't tell the difference. <laughs> Do you think I have a palate? Do I look refined to you? Uh, so I would keep some of that around and I would have it like in the bath or while watching TV. I think I was trying to live my like mid 2000s sitcom TV mom life. And it was fine, but it wasn't really making my night any better. <laughs> and I didn't like how thirsty it made me and how much it dehydrated me. And also, it wasn't good for me. I feel like I shouldn't push myself to do things that aren't even healthy. Something should be fun or it should be healthy. But if it's neither, then just, then just, then just don't. You just skip that, you know? <laughs> it's like learning to like beer, you know? It's not a health product. <laughs> I can happily live my whole life and not really need it. Box wine came a long way. I couldn't tell you where it came from. Wine, wine tastes like, uh, you know, alcoholic fruit juice to me, really. Okay, so there's my three egg yolks in my beer milk mixture. My sugary beer milk mixture. What if this is just really, this may, this has the potential to be either one of the coolest or just one of the grossest things I've ever made. It doesn't look good so far. Same thing with wine is I don't like sweet wine. I think that's what's killing me about the port is this one, it says very clearly this is a dessert wine. You have it, people were saying have it after a meal just a little bit. Because it's really sweet. It's like drinking candy. <sighs> and I don't know. I like tea. Tea's, tea's, I was going to say tea's cheap, but that's not always true. <laughs> tea can be cheap. Tea can be affordable. Tea's nice and warm. Tea has all kinds of different ways to enjoy it and different types and flavors and stuff. And then tea comes with the tea making ritual. And you could frame that as more work. You know, it's more work to make tea than it is to pour wine. But I like the ritual. It gives me an excuse to get up. <laughs> Made a holy pally and heel guy. Very nice. After you heat it up with cinnamon and sugar and cloves and orange slices. Oh. I do think I need new Christmas traditions because it, the holiday means nothing to me anymore. <laughs> and that's sad because it used to be my favorite holiday. What am I doing? I've tried very hard to recreate the magic of Christmas that I remember as an adult. You know, I had a year a couple years ago that I snapped and I'm like, you know what? We're decorating and I bought lights and I got a tree. And it's still, 
I, I don't know if it's because I got older. I feel like Christmas loses some of its magic as you become an adult. And then I, and then I think it's because I, we're far from family. We can't really visit family, especially not this year. And then it's not like we have children that we can view it being magical for. I think it just becomes another thing where we're like, well, <sighs> another one. All right, so we are going to bring the pan over medium heat and to just under a boil, whisking continually. All right, uh, medium heat, here we go. Nothing like some eggy, milky beer. We'll see about continuously. Nothing, nothing like some tea. Made a Volpera warrior named Foxmorn. Not a death knight? I mean, still very good, but not a death knight. Our family is coming together to cook something really amazing. Everyone putting in his best, trying old gourmet recipes. That sounds really nice. Hazel find the chocolate stout. Turns out also, turns out almost all stout is chocolate-ish. Um, it's not like specifically chocolate flavored, but it's chocolatey enough. I found an oat stout that seems like it'll work. But yeah, we did the store. So one thing I want to do, and I was waiting to do this on stream. So the this is the second kind of candy. So not like the not like the spooky pumpkin ghost flavored like regular Halloween candy. Because as it turns out, when you enter the Halloween candy section of a store, most of it is just regular candy that is packaged very small to be handed out at Halloween. It's also already half off despite the fact that it's not Halloween yet. Uh, perhaps because who's trick or treating this year? But um, this is the other one, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be awful. It's skull and bones, and all I want is candy bones. So I don't need the skulls, and I don't need the candy corns. But there are at least a couple of like bones in here, and I want to find out a how many I have, and b how gross they are, because you know we need them for the for the the tar pit pudding ambiance in the final serving, which you're not going to see yet, and uh, that's a tomorrow thing. But and this was the closest thing I could find. I just don't know, man. <laughs> this whole product, it's a candy corn product. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to be awful. I don't know if, that I hate candy corn, but I know that other people do. It doesn't smell good. Some of these are banana. Some of them are chocolate and sea salt. And then the bones, which look like this, they're quite tall. Yeah, I don't know. I want to try one of the bones to find out if they're gross before I put them in the thing, but I also... Ah, I have enough of them. I have... They're, they're huge. Oh, gosh. Oh, dear. <laughs> the skulls are banana candy corn. Why is it soft? Is it supposed to be soft? Oh, that tastes like the dentist. Get out of here. What about these? It's like a regular candy corn. That one's better. I'm not gonna finish eating it, but it's better. Um, it's that, that's just a normal candy corn flavor. It's just like sugar, really. The brown ones are supposed to be chocolate sea salt. But the thing is, they're all in the bag <laughs> with the banana candy corn skulls. And they've all kind of absorbed that flavor because banana gets into everything, even when it's fake. Actually, the chocolate sea salt ones might go with the pudding. I won't throw those ones out. The skulls have got to go. Those are very bad. And then, oh, goodness. Uh, Wendy and Dub, thank you very much for the bitch. Yeah, baking stream, have some bitch. Thank you. Banana really does taint everything. I make a very strong point to not store actual bananas anywhere near, um, anywhere at all close to bread or any kind of bread product. We used to, bread, bananas and then tortillas are two products that we get relatively often in our kitchen, but we don't really have a storage place for them. I find if I put tortillas into a cupboard, I forget that I have them and I don't eat them. So I keep them on the counter, but then I, we also keep bananas on the counter. <laughs> and I found that when I stored them within like three feet of each other, I would just end up with banana e tortillas, and I do not like that. <laughs> mm. Are you more of a sweet or a savory person? I guess I'm more of a savory person now. It's not that I don't like sweets. There are certain sweets, or desserts really, 
that are heavenly and I will hear no argument otherwise. But I don't get excited for them the way I did when I was younger, and I've gained a much greater appreciation for savory things. <laughs> are you still on your coffee adventure going back to the dark side? I do both, I do both. I get my, um, I have my, my adventure, it's almost, it's, it's kind of low, I'm almost on this one. My adventure's coffee coat, this is the last of my Ragnar roast, I'm almost out of it. Uh, in the morning, this is the, this is the new coffee maker with the, uh, the stainless steel coffee pot. So I do that first thing in the morning, I have one cup of coffee, and then I switch to tea for the rest of the day. This is tea. I hate bananas. Smell makes my brain, my brain think of garbage. The, the smell does kind of per, like a banana peel in the garbage does really evocate like a like a school trash can. I feel like so I get you there. That might be part of the reason why what I really like with bananas is really fresh bananas. Like not once they start to get dark spots on them, I am no longer having them because they just start to smell to me like garbage the same way. Yeah. Um, same way about bell peppers. Now those I kind of like. Do you use tea, tea pots or just tea bags? I have both. Um, I have bag tea, I have loose leaf tea, um, I have baskets that will brew the loose leaf in the pot. I have all kinds of stuff. So I have, this bone is mangled. I don't really know what happened to it. <laughs> it's not in, it is not it's going to be too much glare. It is not in good shape anymore, which means that I can try a little bit of it to find out if this is an applicable candy to mix with the pudding in the layers. I don't like it. What is that supposed to taste like? I'm kind of mad today. All I can think is it tastes stupid and it's not a taste. It's not a flavor. I can't just say something tastes stupid. <laughs> I mean, I can and I have. Wow, I hate it. Um, <laughs> so dumb. Um, uh, mm. Crazy, thank you very much for the four month resub. Also, I think I missed one a few minutes ago from Centurio 1986, their 11 month resub, thank you. Maybe next time you can make your own bone candy. Candy making sounds like my own personal hell. It sounds hard, it sounds like it requires specific and strict temperature manipulation, and anytime you're heating up sugar, you're making your very own homemade kitchen napalm that is both, will get very hot and very sticky. Um, I don't know about all that. <laughs> I mean, you like I can melt some chocolate into a mold just fine. Could you cut chocolate into bone shapes? I would need to do white chocolate, and I don't. I only have white chocolate, and white chocolate chips, and this is really only for the like the photo. And I don't even take photos anyways. Like, why even? Why? Why even bother? <laughs> why? I'll I'll save some of these stupid things for the photo, but I'm not eating them. <laughs> If I put them in the pudding, I am taking them out again before I consume it. Those are awful. All right. So anyways, the rest of the plan here. So that we're, we're bringing it to just under a boil. I'm supposed to be whisking continuously. You would assume that it's about there. It's quite foamy, but it was foamy from when I started mixing it. It is steaming. It smells weird. It's, oh, <coughs> oh, I don't care for that. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, I don't think this is going to be my favorite one. I don't like that at all. Maybe it was just the remnant of the candy flavor. Oh no. <laughs> all right, well the rest of the plan is we're supposed to melt some chocolate in that monstrosity. So let's sacrifice some chocolate, shall we? Maybe that'll make it smell better. Oh my God. I think it's just the, the, the smell of like warm eggs and beer. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Why did I think this would be good? <laughs> Oh no, I'm sure it's okay. I'm sure, well, no I'm not. That's a bald faced lie. I hope it's okay. Um, this is three ounces of chocolate. We're gonna break this up into pieces and start melting it in. Um, and I'll have, no I won't. I'm just gonna stop eating things because it's not helping. <sighs> Did you say warm eggs and beer? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're making a pudding and the pudding includes egg yolks and it also includes stout beer. And um, I'm turning a fan on. 
It doesn't, I, I got like, I, I put my face too far in it. I got too strong of a whiff. I also, sometimes, I'm not, I swear I'm not that squeamish. I'm not usually that precious about, about food. I like to think I'm pretty open-minded and I'll try a lot of things, but there's a couple of smells and eggs can sometimes be one of them that will just make me quite ill very quickly. I don't think I'm allergic or anything because it's like, I can be eating eggs fine, but if I'm eating eggs and I get a whiff of another smell, and usually it's dog food. If I smell dog food while I'm eating eggs, then it makes me really sick, which is a very strange thing. But apparently um, beer is another one. <laughs> And I think it's just the, com the combination. I wasn't even eating the eggs. All right, well, that's, that's melting. What's that for a while? Oh, boy. Uh, need to waft. Did you learn anything in chemistry? I never took chemistry. Uh, Drainer treasures don't work anymore. I think they'll still give you a little bit of experience. It's just not going to be your only experience. Same issue with eggs. Yeah, they're just nerfed. Chocolate looks really good. It's okay. Um, it's, a, it's the Girardelli baking chocolate. And when I first came to the States, this stuff looked so fancy and everybody was all excited about it. And I swear it's only okay. Like I've, it's, it's your standard issue mass produced baking chocolate. It'll make a perfectly fine thing, but it's not, oh, this is thickening now. That's good. It was supposed to do that. I'm not dumb enough to sniff it again though. Maybe after all the chocolates in there, it will be better. Or maybe I will make this and go, well, now I know. And try it once and then throw it into the depths of the moth. Give it to Sylvanas. Happy, happy Christmas. Um, ah, dear. If you mix the milk and eggs and beer, are the eggs just going to scramble? The idea, I think, is that you're heating it slowly. Um, and the eggs were already incorporated in the larger quantity of milk and beer before you heated it. It's like, it's like making a curd with beer and milk and chocolate. <sighs> um, it's not great, but we'll do. Tattoo's coming along nicely. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. I am looking forward to getting more done. I don't get to go back until December, but once I start going back in December, we've got a couple of appointments in a row. Not like close together in a row, but I don't have any more month gaps. Have you watched Hellstrom on Hulu? I don't have Hulu. We, uh, we have Prime Video and we have Netflix. And I think that's it right now. Sometimes we'll do HBO Max, but we're not, we don't have HBO right now. I think we canceled it after Game of Thrones when I realized that Westworld wasn't fun to watch if I wasn't reading about it on Reddit. Uh, what is Hulu? It's another service like, uh, it's another video streaming service. All right. That doesn't need to be that hot, I don't think. But it's, uh, it's not curdling, I don't think. It does look a little lumpy, but you know, what else is new? I was afraid that would happen with just the, the cornstarch in there at the beginning instead of being added separately. I find sometimes it clumps a little bit. Um, and also, I just, oh dear, oh no, I dropped a piece on the burner. That's made a mess. I'm sad. <laughs> cool down. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. It's like boiling, and then that's going to burn. I mean, I'm just gonna take it off the heat, honestly, because I think it's already hot enough to melt this, and I don't think we're heating it up any further. So after we, yeah, after it's thickened and the chocolate's melting, we're removing it from the heat, and then we're gonna add in some butter and vanilla. And then we basically just put it in the fridge to set, and that's gonna be about it for the pudding. I will try it a little tiny bit before it's cold, because um, I'll try a little tiny bit. Oh, I added too much chocolate, I forgot. I needed three ounces of chocolate, and I thought that was the whole thing, but this is four ounces of chocolate, but you know what, that's probably what that needs. All right, so we're just gonna melt the rest of the chocolate. We're gonna melt some butter. We're gonna melt some vanilla. I feel as though I am throwing perfectly good ingredients into Mount Doom, you know, after the ring, just so that it has something to snack on as it melts. <laughs> Cause I'm, I may never get these back. I mean, of course I'm not getting them back, but so we're gonna do a tablespoon of butter. And then uh, it smells like breakfast. Why does it smell like breakfast? I eat neither chocolate nor beer for breakfast. <laughs> it kind of smells like toast. I don't know what's going on. Is it the eggs? Maybe. Cinder Fox, thank you for the 14 month reset. Hey, baking time. We're doing something. It doesn't smell like eggs anymore. It smells like toast. It smells like buttered toast with beer. Uh, <laughs> 
bread and eggs. Beer is practically bread. Yeah, maybe it's the beer flavor. Maybe the beer is giving off a bread flavor. What kind of beer would somebody use for beer battered fried food? A good question that I hope somebody knows. Hey, Cat Mystery, thanks for continuing your sub. The Alliance. You like my apron? I'm holding on to this forever. I, they don't make them anymore. Honestly, they didn't make them in the first place. I got it off Etsy, but the Etsy seller doesn't make them anymore. And uh, it's pretty sturdy. It's not like it's needed a lot of repairs, but it did have a hole. It developed a hole in the bottom of one of the pockets, so I hand-stitched it together because I'm not letting this thing go. I oh, Andrew, I think for the gift subs. Do you have a delay? I feel like you answered me before sending the message. <laughs> nah, I just saw that one early. Most of the time I see things very late and the other half of the time I miss things. All right, so this now looks good and it smells better. I think the chocolate made it smell better. It's still, it's still a little lumpy. So, oh no, vanilla. I almost forgot the vanilla. Um, I am mixing in a half a teaspoon of vanilla because that'll help. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Where are, where are my spoons? I used them. Here they are. What is on my finger? Ew. I, I... <laughs> There's Halloween monsters in my kitchen. I think that was a piece of candy. I'm craving chocolate, I should leave now. Uh, how did you like getting tattooed in the crease of your left arm? Um, uh, not. <laughs> Hurts. <laughs> Unpleasant. I've got more to do too. They didn't, they haven't shaded it yet. When uh, on my last appointment, we did this shading and we were going to shade the whole branch, but my arm was so inflamed from just doing this much that he said if he finished it in the same session, I would not be able to straighten the arm for a few days. So we're going to finish it next time. But yeah, uh, in right, right here is a bad spot. It's not unmanageable. Um, tattoos hurt wherever you're getting them. It's just uh, <laughs> in the scale of things. That one's a little ouchy. Watch the Elcraft pod this morning. Always great to see you on it. Uh, the remain the remnants of the gooey stupid candy taking its revenge. I did call it stupid. I did denigrate the good name of that cheap candy corn. All right, so there's a little vanilla. Ooh, it made a little hole. Uh, whisk that in. And then I'm gonna pour this into a container to set. And I need to think very carefully over what I'm gonna pour it into. Because I'm gonna serve it in different containers. I'm, I'm gonna eventually do what she's done here with the broken up graham crackers. We're skipping the candy bones because they're stupid. Um, but like the layers. And that means I need to set it in something else. But the big bowl, you know, I guess I can set it in just like a mixing bowl. I was going to set it in, um, if I can find room in the fridge. I was thinking of setting it in, can I store these beer bottles down here? Yes, I can. I will forget about them forever and that's the, probably the way it should be. Um, I have a big like six or eight cup measure, but I use it to cook my oats in the morning. All right, there we go. So that will make some room. I haven't reorganized my fridge in a while. I don't keep a ton of stuff in it, but I keep just enough stuff in it, poorly enough organized, that uh, I end up running out of room all the time. Usually the idea is that the top shelf is for things that need to be eaten right away. And then the middle shelf is like dairy and the bottom shelf is for tall things, but all right. So I'm getting a bowl. Okay. We are over. Ah! Let's do this one. And then I'm going to pour. Actually, I'm going to put a lid on the vanilla so I don't knock it over and make a vanilla catastrophe because even cheap vanilla is apparently expensive. All right. That's close enough. I didn't get it fully scraped, but I don't know if saving all of this is my primary motivation in life. 
They used a chalky kind of candy, like bone-shaped runts. Oh, like like a like a like rockets maybe. All right, so this is our this is our this is our pudding. It has a tiny spot on the front that looks like unincorporated egg, and I feel like I'm just gonna skim that off with a spoon because there's no way that's good. That's not gonna. It's not good now, and it won't be good later. And you can just leave. <laughs> Get out of there. All right. So I'm gonna set this in the fridge to chill, and that's basically it for the pudding. But don't worry, we have more to do today. Uh, but let's try. Let's try just a little bit first, because this will give us the flavor of it. Well, it's less stupid than the candy. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's so weird. All right. I don't know if I should make surface contact like you sometimes do with pudding to avoid like a skin on it. I think I'm just gonna cover it normally. And then if it gets a skin, I'll take it off normally, manually. It's not like it won't stick to the plastic anyway. So I'm just gonna chuck that in the fridge. Um. That's so weird. I don't know that I like it, but I hate it less than I did earlier. <laughs> I think it's just the presence of the stout. I think I just don't like it. Uh, popping in quick to see yummy food. What awesomeness are you making today? So we're trying the Ungaro Tar Pit pudding, and I feel like this is one of those concepts that's just kind of a, more of a niche taste or an acquired taste. I'm sure the flavors do go. I think I ruined I think I ruined my own palate by trying some of that cheap candy. We used a we used a Ninkasi oat stout. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to um I'm going to clean up the evidence and then uh, I want to start a second thing. I may this may end up being a short baking stream today because um, I do have some other stuff that I want to get to tonight before it's too late. But there's one more thing after I finish uh, making this look like it never happened. There's one more thing that I want to start and show you from the WoW cookbook this time. Also make sure to use sunscreen on it. I'm watching a weekend long land with 41 French streamers. Fun. How do you plan? Oh, do you plan on joining OTK? I don't think I, I don't think, um, I mean, first of all, they haven't asked. Second of all, I don't think that um, an org is in my best interest for me and my own goals. I just like, it's not anything personal about that org. I just, I don't know that I need an org in general. Um, <laughs> until somebody can convince me that I do, I don't think I'm joining anybody really. <sighs> so glad I found this stream. We do all right around here. Man, I am obsessed. So I put up a bird feeder yesterday. I did it yesterday night um, after stream. I put up my new bird feeder. And in bird feeding, when you Google, how long will it take birds to find my feeder? They talk about the rule of twos, which is that it could take the birds two seconds, two minutes, two hours or two days or two months to find your feeder. And there's just no real way of knowing when. Uh, there's lots of factors that can feed into it. But you can't like, you know, grab a bird and drag it over there and like make it eat. You gotta just kind of wait. And I'm hoping because I have neighbors that have feeders that look very similar to mine that the birds will catch on and I haven't seen any yet. And until I see like first bird, I'm going to be just obsessively checking <laughs> to see if there's any birds because I'm so excited about them. I want to look at the birds. I want to identify the birds. I would like to take photos of the birds. I went through a brief, a brief phase in 2017 where I was like, I'm going to take pictures of birds. I, I had just gotten my first, my first um, proper camera for my YouTube channel, and I realized I could also use it for photography. And like everybody that just got a DSLR that they don't know what to, that they don't know what to do with, I took it outside with a completely inappropriate lens, and I'm like, I'm going to find some birds, and I'm going to take some pictures of them. And, uh, and I went and I found some birds and I did my best to take some photos of them, which was kind of difficult because they move and often they're far from you and your standard kit lens on a DSLR is not really much of a zoom lens. So you're not really getting a very close up shot of them. 
but I still had a good time and I actually got some pictures that I'm still surprisingly happy with. But I just have like that one set <laughs> from 2017. I have some from there and then we went on a trip to the Oregon coast and I have some from there. I got like a real cool picture of a seagull. And that was so much fun, but then I didn't do it for another three years, presumably because it was hard. <laughs> and I'm hoping that being able to see some birds closer to home will re-excite me to learn more about them. Because I don't want to have any like birds indoors, but I am down to, to look at them outside. Hazen will do all the bird things. I will look and go, bird. I mean, I don't, I don't want to do anything to them. I mostly just want to feed them. You're stealing birds from your neighbors? You put a webcam on the feeder? I don't think I want to record or photograph anything that is outside of my residence, just for security reasons. Um, it would be different. Actually, no, it probably wouldn't be. <laughs> There's drones are a thing. Uh, you're a pally. Thank you very much for the brand new sub. Welcome to the squirrel squad. Not bad. What's your favorite bird? So they're um, kind of divisive choice because they are, um, and maybe I'll change my mind <laughs> once I have bird feeders and I start chasing away all the other birds that I want. But I really like red-winged blackbirds. We have them around here. And they make such a unique, pretty sound. And they look so pretty with their big wings, They're like the red shoulder patch on their wings. And it was one of the first ones that I learned to identify both by sound and visual. So that's actually what the bird on my tattoo sleeve is supposed to be. It's not, it's going to be, I think, just black and white. I don't think we're adding any color. But that's supposed to be a red-winged blackbird because I really like them. There's going to be another one on my upper arm. <sighs> Go. Started muck a couple days ago. I'm already level 46. Nice. I am jealous. All I want to do is level. Ever since I made Boy, my my warlock, <laughs> my warlock named Boy, all I want to do is level Boy. I'm having so much fun on Boy. I did a dungeon last night on Boy. I was doing some questing. I finally got that all the things patch that fixed the problem I was having with the white gear showing up. And I'm just ready to party. <laughs> but I have like stuff to do, you know? I always put your streams on in the background when I'm grinding stuff. Also just got a promotion, but my new hours are doing raid hours. Raid guildless right before the next expansion. Oh no. Well, that's really unfortunate. Uh, did you celebrate proper Thanksgiving? No, we don't do... I'm away from my family. It's just sad. Like, what am I going to do? Make myself a salmon? Um, <laughs> there's, like, I can't go home. And my family can't come here. And we don't really do American Thanksgiving really either. So it's just kind of, uh, it's just kind of sad. <laughs> also, as, as, as a non-turkey eater and a non-ham eater, Thanksgiving was never super high on my list. It's nice to see family, but in the absence of that, the food was never that special to me. It was basically a bunch of vegetables. All right, so that is one thing sorted, but I have another thing on the agenda. You named your warlock boy? You betcha. <laughs> If you look on my Twitch highlights, I just saved the, the clip where I made him because uh, it's, just, it's just, you know, it's going to go down in history. <laughs> mm. Make it yourself. Set up a private stream to cook with your family. I mean, they're kind of spread out, too. There's like a bunch of them. Some people get along and some people don't. And it's, some of them are tech savvy and some of them aren't. <sighs> we FaceTime, but I don't. It's too much work and I'm too sad. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, apparently I don't have good internet where I was. How's the pudding coming along? It's chillin'. <laughs> it's chillin' in the fridge. It's, it's gone through some phases of varying levels of palatability. Um, all right, so the next thing that I want to do is start, and again, another thing that we can't finish, but I want to, I want to at least start my favorite bread recipe from the WoW cookbook, which is the Mulgore Spice Bread. <sighs> uh, this is a very simple recipe. It's basically, you got your bread flour. It does use milk, um, brown sugar, yeast, of course. Uh, the Mulgore spices are cardamom, ginger, cinnamon, cloves, and mace. So like kind of warm Christmassy spices and stuff. Uh, and then salt, of course, and like butter. So it's basically just kind of a slightly enriched but really warm, spicy bread. And I'm gonna make it, I think, in the bread machine. I'm either gonna make just the dough in the bread machine or the whole thing, probably the whole thing, because um, it's not that important to me to shape the, well, is it? When you shape the loaf by hand, you get one of those like oblong cartoon style loaves with the diagonal slashes in them. And when you make it in the bread machine, you're gonna get a very tall cuboid thing. How much of the beer did you try? Um, some, well, no, I, last night I had about a tablespoon 
And then today I didn't try any because I've already had it. I don't like it. It's not for me. Uh, have you ever been vegan? No, I like um, fish and seafood and my culinary life is much easier because I continue to eat eggs and dairy. I don't eat a lot of them and I try to cut down wherever I can, but between my own diet and my husband's allergies, if I went vegan, we would just have to eat completely separately. Like we wouldn't be able to overlap food because he's allergic to everything vegan. I wonder if that was the first time in history that sentence was said. Is it illegal to make stuff at this time of year without pumpkin spice in it? I mean, isn't that basically pumpkin spice? Pumpkin spice is not literally pumpkin. It's like spices that you put in pumpkin pie, which I feel like is at least some of these things. So what I'm gonna do is um, basically ignore the recipe, but use the quantities and then just put them in the bread maker as indicated because with this thing, and it'll be different for different bread makers, but basically you just put in your liquids first and then your, your, your weird stuff, and then your flour, and then your yeast on top, and then you turn it on, and then it just does this little bread maker dance, and then like three hours later, it's like, hello, you have bread, and it's just the most magical thing in the entire world. Have you ever made your own gravlax? I don't know what that is. Super easy salmon? Oh, interesting. Once vegetarian, tried going vegan, couldn't live without dairy and eggs. Yeah, I, we do really like oat milk. Um, I, I will have oat milk over any kind of a dairy creamer in my coffee every day, but, um, but yeah, we, uh, we definitely rely on um, seafood in particular. I'm pescatarian, not vegetarian, so seafood and then the occasional eggs and dairy. Okay, so I'm going for, I, speaking of eggs and dairy, this, this is a recipe that uses milk instead of water. So we're gonna go for one and a half cups of milk. It does say warm milk. I'm gonna warm it just a little bit in the microwave. Every time I try to warm it up in the microwave, I always overdo it. So I'm only gonna do a little bit, especially because um, I'm not really worried about how fast, like it, the, the bread maker is gonna warm everything up while it's proving anyways, it's pretty good at that. So I'm not gonna fuss too much about the temperature. I'm just gonna warm it up a little bit, but we're going for one and a half cups. We're gonna need another carton of milk. <laughs> this device generates bread, it's basically a mage. It is basically a mage. It's my, it's my, <laughs> it's my Kieran Tor machine. Speaking of mages, I was looking at my character sheet. Character sheet? No, I was looking at my character screen. You know, my login screen of WoW, where all my alts live. And I was looking, I was like, you know, I have three, I have four of some classes now, I have three of others, I have two of most of them. And despite the fact that I'm supposed to be prioritizing cloth characters to, to collect cloth mog, I only have one mage. I have three warlocks and only one mage. And while I have mages on Horde's side, I've got a Nightborn mage and then I just made an undead mage. This is really close. One and a half, there we go. Um, I, I could use a second alliance mage. You know, we're all packing anyways, why not? <laughs> Wanna play some D&D? I do, as a matter of fact. I just both don't know how and don't have the friends. But um, one day, maybe. That's like kind of a retirement goal of mine. All right, so we're gonna need this for like 20 seconds. Not even. 18 seconds. Scientific total. <laughs> mage, mage can magic of bread. Mm. The famous Mr. Breadmaker. It's, this is, um, I mean, this machine I think is just Amazon Basics, but they all do basically the same thing. <sighs> Zoom D&D. I mean, I'd I have to learn how to play d and I, I remember I played Pathfinder once. I was part of a Pathfinder campaign in my late teens. And I spent the entire thing being really confused. I bought the huge book of rules <laughs> And I spent the entire thing just trying desperately to keep up with what was happening, and it wasn't any fun at all. And then people were really impatient with me trying to figure out what was going on so I could understand what parameters that I had to make my decisions with. Um, a little more. A little more. With this kind of thing, you want it to be not hot. You're trying not to kill your yeast, but the warm, if it's warmer, your yeast is going to have an easier time getting going at the beginning. And I think sometimes the richer doughs can kind of suppress your yeast a little bit. I don't know. Um, so we're gonna just pour this in here. This bread maker can take basically any recipe as long as it doesn't use too much stuff, like as long as it's gonna fit in there. And this only calls for three cups of flour, which is fine. I am going to use bread flour today because I have it because I am a fancy bread maker. <sighs> D&D is as fun as your group. Playing D&D is not hard to learn. Yeah, it's just one of the things that I would love to do, but I have negative time for. And, you know, social anxiety. Uh, brown sugar, right. So now we're gonna add brown sugar and salt and butter. 
Um, I will melt my butter first, which I can actually do in here. So we're going to take two tablespoons of butter. And I think that's actually just kind of what's left on this stick. Yeah, so I'm just going to melt the rest of the stick of butter, add it in there. And then we're going to add our sugar and salt and spices, flour, and then yeast. So I always melt butter in the microwave. It's a little scary. Let's say, um, let's do this for 45 seconds, but on cook power like 30. And I'm just gonna watch it, because the thing with butter is, I'm sure you know, you know it gets too hot and it starts to explode and then you gotta clean the butter up from your microwave. And yes, I have a cover thingy. No, I didn't get it. It's just one of those days. <sighs> I have the same fridge, microwave, and oven as you. I mean, apartments tend to be pretty mass produced. I'm sure they're just, I'm sure it's just uh, some, some landlord overlord somewhere just ordered like a hundred thousand of them. What's the difference between all purpose and bread flour? Does bread flour come with added dry ingredients? Bread flour comes with a higher protein content, which further enables the development of the glutens that you want in, um, the glutens that you want in the creation of bread as opposed to, um, all right. A little more. Because, you know, if you're making a cookie, you don't want it to be, like, super chewy and super stretchy. Calm down. Maybe that is close enough. Uh, but with uh, bread, you know, you, 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 want the, you want the gluten. Mm. Are you going to join Taliesin on his new NA character? Sounds unlikely. I wish him the best, though. Not anything on him. It's just when was the last time you saw me play with somebody? <laughs> wow, with other people? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> What's that supposed to be all about? Um, all purpose sometimes has an added leavener. That I have not seen. Did I say I was gonna watch the butter? I thought I just said I was gonna turn down the power. Anyways, this is mostly melted. It'll get incorporated. It will either get incorporated later as this thing mixes and heats, or it won't and there'll be a weird buttery lump in my finished loaf of bread. Both of those are acceptable outcomes to me, so I'm moving on with my life. All right, sugar and salt. So sugar, brown sugar. I keep my brown sugar in a gigantic container. I don't know why. <laughs> Nobody needs this much brown sugar. I never do, but I have it anyways. We're using two tablespoons of it. <sighs> it's not like WoW is a multiplayer game or anything, right? <laughs> Anyone know why I can't enable war mode? I chose WAD and Chromie Time. You are trying in Stormwind or Orgrimmar? Uh, let's see, if you place the war mode on, we can go as a squirrel squad and gank him. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I feel like, I feel like, I don't know what I feel like. <sighs> uh, Maniacal Media, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the squirrel squad. I also don't know if I thanked Erevarth for their five month reset. Cooking Canadians. Don't use war mode and Draenor. Draenor is very crowded. Um, Especially right now with lots of people leveling alts. Draenor is phenomenally crowded and that will make for a spicy war mode experience. Although you will be mostly fighting people. Well, I was going to say, you're not going to be really fighting a lot of people that are, if you're leveling in Draenor in Chromie time, you should not be fighting any max level people, any fifties. You might fight a 49, <laughs> but you shouldn't be fighting any geared end game players because um, it spits them out of Chromie time as soon as they hit 50. All right, so now we need salt. We're adding one teaspoon of salt. And then for the flour, I actually am going to weigh it because it makes a pretty big difference. I'm usually not that fussy, but for flour and bread, it helps a lot. <laughs> oh, Jolly Bookworm, thank you very much for your nine a month reset. Had a guild invading storm into my realm today. That was scary. Me? I always, I always get kind of nervous whenever that's happening to, because I'm not PVP flagged, right? So they can't hurt me. But sometimes I'm worried I'm just gonna like tab target like shadow word pain to somebody's pet or something like that. Just like absent-mindedly attack something just out of sheer force of habit. <laughs> and um, and then and then there's no going back. Okay. There's your salt. And uh, that's the wrong recipe. That's for the pudding. And then spices. So a half teaspoon each of cardamom, ginger, cinnamon. And then a little bit of cloves and mace. Although I usually go kind of heavy on the cloves because I just like them. But we'll start with the cardamom ginger cinnamon. I adore cardamom and I don't know why it's not in more things. It's such a yummy spice. Chromie time might make it plausible to get Warlord or Drainer again. Oh, that's actually kind of fair. Um, can you start it while you're sub 
50. Level in Kermitime, can I stop midway and go back to the real timeline? Yep, absolutely. Anytime you want, you go back to Chromi and you can either switch timelines or just get back out of the Chromi time phasing if you want. Ooh, these jars are not ideal. I have to take the lid off anytime that I want to actually put a spoon in here. And then you have this accumulation of spice on the rim that's, oh, <laughs> vaporized it, that's kind of built up under where the lid screws on. And it makes a very big mess. I've, oh, and also it doesn't quite fit my teaspoon. I've since learned to do it over the sink, but still. <laughs> Uh, the, there is a, there's like a spoon shaped opening and it's not big enough for like any spoon ever. <laughs> I thought they were, I thought I was so cute buying like empty glass jars so I could like buy spikes, spices in bulk and stuff. And it is a good idea. I just didn't get good jars. <sighs> spoon sounds remind me of ASMR videos. Thanks for all your advice and help guys. Uh, thanks for all the in informational videos. Gildies is in the progress. Can't wait to watch the new ones for Shadowlands. Landa, how are you watching? I am excited about the Shadowlands content. The, the instance content is so fun. I had so much fun testing the dungeons. The raid was really good too, but the dungeons, dungeon testing is just more relaxed because it's a smaller group. All right, and then ginger, same thing. Oh, I was supposed to use a half a teaspoon, wasn't I? <laughs> Whoops, the days you do. I uh, doubled the cardamom, so you know what? I'm gonna double everything else so at least they're in harmony and we're making some spicy bread. <laughs> It's my kitchen and I will make spicy bread if I want to. Uh, what mic is that? This is a Rode interview kit, I think. It, a Rode, I forget. It's one of the Rode ones. It's a, it's a wireless mic pack that I have in my front pocket um, because wired mics were a big mistake back when I you know, running around the kitchen, you're just getting caught on stuff all the time. And then I tried different cheap wireless mics and that turned out to be a mistake. So, uh, yeah. double spiced bread. To be fair, whenever um, recipes and cookies and holiday baking calls for spices, I do tend to amp it up by um, usually like 20 to 30%. I don't usually double it, but uh, here we are. You know, I'm making something different today. So then a pinch of cloves. I won't put a whole teaspoon of cloves in. That would be too much. <laughs> Yeah, Mulgar really spicy bread. Do you ever try a boom mic? No. The kitchen's kind of echoey and also I don't have anywhere to mount it. This isn't a set. This is my home. And there's, it's just, it's already crowded enough. There's like, there's, there's a desk on the other side and there's like an aquarium over there. And they're like, the lighting's not good. It's not, it's not a set. This is where I actually live and cook. What am I doing? I'm getting a little bit of clothes. I won't stick any spoons in here, but I will just kind of go doop, 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 doop. There. Doop. there we go. And then uh, what was the last one they wanted me to use? A little bit of cloves, a little bit of mace. I don't think I have mace. Uh, so, rip. Oh well, what do you do? <clears throat> just curious, lapel mic sounds great. It's good enough, it'll do. Um, I think I once tried to do, not a boom mic, but I tried to use like an extra desk mic that I had that had a pretty good range on it, but it just sounded super bad. It just sounded super echoey. I needed something that I could keep on me, especially because sometimes I have to like go far and face the wrong way, essentially. Like boom mics aren't really great for spinning around, usually, unless you have it like up and above, and I would just need too much rigging for that. Um, I did my salt, I did my spices, I did my butter, I did my sugar, I did my yeast. All right, no, I haven't done yeast yet. Yeast is next. We do flour and then yeast. So I'm gonna grab my bread flour. I have a bag here. I have like a beautiful big plastic sort of snapware container that I store my flour in, but that's for my all-purpose flour. And I, I never did get another one for bread flour. And if I did, I didn't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> I, every day that goes by is another day that I convince myself that I'm just really, I think, starting to get close to ready to brave the challenges of, whew, flour came out of that. Trying to brave home ownership. I would like to make it happen. I am looking for my scale. So if I remember correctly, a cup of bread flour is about 127, 125 grams. So three of them means we're looking at about 370, 380 ish. So I'm going to take usually a bowl, but I, that one's taken. Um, I'll do a big bowl and then I'll just kind of spoon it in once I've measured it. So 380 grams, give or take a few, but not that many. So we just, I could probably just empty the rest of this bag in, that's probably not gonna be enough. 
So that was, actually that was pretty close, 325. I feel like since just measuring and weighing out my flour and using um, the bread machine, I go through so much less flour because I'm not making a huge mess with it. I don't need to use a bunch of it for like rolling and kneading the dough and everything. Dark Enforcer with the 10 gift subs. Thank you very, very, very much. Just bought a home a couple weeks ago. It's not as bad as it seems. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> All I ever hear online is people saying, I bought a house and I'm happy, but I wish I was dead. Just over and over and over again on Twitter. And just people just <laughs> really miserable. And I just need to hear some hope. <laughs> uh, that's lovely. Thank you so much. Right. All right. So we're going a little more. 330. There's definitely like a hole in this bag somewhere. Oh, 300. Oh, too much, too much. Let's spoon some back in. 385. We're going back down to 380. 371. 378. That's a good compromise. That'll do. Okay, so now I got to get this in here. And uh, I'm just going to spoon it on. They want you to have the flour separating the yeast from the wet ingredients, but I think the purpose of that is so that if you're doing like a timer, like you're setting this up the night before and then timing it so it makes you fresh bread in the morning, then you don't want your yeast getting activated too early because then it gets hungry and whatever. Um, and I think that's the only reason for the really strict layering. So I think because I'm starting this now, you know, for that fresh spiced bread at like <laughs> dinner time, yeah, we can have this with dinner. I don't see why not. It won't matter so much, but it's also not that hard to just keep the yeast on top of the flour. It's not usually a big deal. Okay, this is a heavy thing to hold. All right, and then last thing that we need is some yeast, and then we pretty much just turn it on. Um, I thought I would have to really, so te two teaspoons of yeast. I thought I would really have to, um, oh, teaspoon's still dry. I thought I was really gonna have to fine tune and like select the right cycle for each type of bread. But in my experience, they all work really well on like the default bread cycle. It seems to do a pretty good job. Uh, it has, I think, two kneading phases and two rising phases with one last short, shorter rise before the end. That's salt, we're not putting more salt in. That's what they call a mistake. Uh, we're doing <laughs> two teaspoons of yeast and then I should stop making decisions before I ruin something. All right. There's one, there's two, and then we close it, and then you say, go. Is that not the most fun thing ever? Um, I feel like it's both an easy bake oven for adults, and also, like, as a kid, I used to, like, read fantasy books, and I used to sort of imagine potions class and, you know, witches' cauldrons brewing stuff and putting in your magic ingredients and then making magic happen. And this is a device that you put in ingredients and you don't really need to say any incantations or anything like that, but like, and then it creates bread. And it, it kind of is magic. I know you can make bread with your hands, but apparently I'm just not that kind of sorcerer. <sighs> Home ownership is amazing. You go in knowing that you have to do everything for the place, fix anything that may need fixing. I mean, I'm allowed to pay people to fix things that need fixing, right? <laughs> I'm, allowed, I'm allowed to look at a problem and go, that's above my skill set, and then hire somebody, hopefully. Uh, follow the rules of equivalent exchange. I so need a bread machine. So fair warning, the worst part of having a bread machine is look at how big this thing is. It's huge and it only for the most part does the one thing. I'm sure you can make jam or whatever in it, but were you gonna make jam? I don't think so. So it's, it's great if you have either, you don't care about your counter space and you're happy to just keep it on the counter all the time, or you have like a shelf or a cupboard where it will fit that you can put it away in, but it is a big appliance that really only does this thing. However, this thing is phenomenal, and it just makes fresh bread very easily with very little mess. Super easy to clean up. Um, I, I've been, I, I don't regret buying it at all. Super, super fun. I'm sure jam, fresh jam is really delicious. It's just one of those things that, for me anyways, and my own lazy brain, I always say I'm going to make it, and then I'm like, oh, it's good. Starbought jam. <laughs> I've never had that and went, no. <laughs> We're staying in an apartment because we aren't handy. We can just call someone to fix things. I do appreciate that angle. I think it's just in our apartment with our maintenance. Sometimes they don't fix it good. Sometimes they come in and they're like, we don't know what to do. We'll call somebody and then they don't. Sometimes it takes them days to arrive 
And sometimes they just won't tell you when they're going to arrive, and then you spend three days, like, not ever showering because you don't want them to come in when you're naked. <laughs> you know? That's not, that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean, right? Like, and there's also, like, inspections and... It's just a, it's, I think I'm just done. I think I'm just ready. If, if I can, hair in my mouth, if I can, if I can manage it and I can be smart with my money and I can save and I can work hard, I think we can do it. <sighs> Have you got ours for $1 at the thrift store? Freezer jam is easier. Throw frozen fruits, sugar, and pectin. A couple hours later, you have jam. Interesting. Uh, my apartment flooded last year. They paid for a five-star hotel for three weeks. Insurance paid out stuff that got ruined. That's really nice. We had our yearly inspection, and it was just such a joke. Yeah. They, we've actually, I think, missed a few inspections. They had, like, they had some issues preventing them from doing it for a while, and then they haven't been going, doing anything since COVID. But I just, I just always hated them. It's not like there's anything I'm hiding around here. It's just, I feel uncomfortable. It's like, it's like having somebody look at, like your parents look and see if you cleaned your room well enough. And I know they don't care if my apartment's clean. They just don't want it to be damaged or anything like that. But, you know. <sighs> I just stopped washing dishes. I'm not done yet. <laughs> there's more. Anytime there's an expansion, they're there for five minutes. New to watching your staff stuff and the bean out puns, love your content. Thanks. Anything new on the electrical front? No, they never came back. I don't know if they're gonna. Um, I'm just continuing to run it on the extension cord because that's been working fine. I think what I'm gonna do is in a few days when I have a couple hours where I don't mind the breaker flipping if it, if it needs to, is I'm gonna just plug everything back in the way it was and try it again. And I betcha it goes back to not flipping because I betcha it was weather related. We had just that crazy storm with a real high humidity and it doesn't super make sense to me, but I can't think of any other reason. And I have a feeling that's gonna be the case. But otherwise I can just keep using the extension cord. <sighs> it's not great, but you know, some things aren't. Washing dishes, gotta get done somehow. I don't really mind washing dishes, although usually if I'm doing them if I'm cooking or washing dishes just for life, I'll usually put in headphones. I'll get some wireless headphones in and I'll listen to music while I'm doing it. And that makes everything more fun. Let you know that I'm always looking forward to your streams. Keep up your awesome work. Thanks, Nule. We moved into our house three years ago thinking landlords were gonna expect every three months. We have not had one inspection. Apartment complex failed my neighbor's inspection due to a shirt on the bathroom floor. Failed it? I know around here what they're looking for is they want to make sure that like the safety features are in place so they don't want to see people like disabling fire alarms or um, I don't know, stuff like that. <sighs> Doing anything illegal. Um, I don't know, I don't know if they need us to have picked up unless it's like a fire hazard of some kind. <sighs> My place is always, I try to keep it clean and it ends up being mostly clean. I'm never happy with it. I, there's always clutter that I'm mad about, but it feels like I can never quite get on top of all of it because, I don't know, some of it is just stuff that doesn't have a better place to be. They barely looked around and didn't even test the smoke detector just to check if you're a hoarder. Yeah, I think with us, we've stayed here long enough that when we do eventually move out, I think they're going to be replacing and re like redoing the carpets and painting anyways because we've been here like five or six years now. Um, so. Hopefully, they don't seem overly concerned about minor stuff. All right, so we can put this away, put these away, put the ginger away. That needs more flour, actually. That is one thing that I will do, is I'll check it when it's first kneading, and if it's just completely soupy, then there's too much liquid. You want it to be pulling away from the sides at least a little bit. Um, otherwise, you're gonna get weird bread. Wet dough is fine, but that's actual liquid. So usually you'll just add a little bit of uh, a little bit of um, flour until it starts pulling away from the sides of the uh, sides of the thing. It looks like a little monster in there. A little bit more. It smells like a gingerbread cookie. <laughs> you can so smell the spices in that. I'm gonna uh, call that good for now. I'll check on it in a little bit. Okay. Move into a new house. One day, <laughs> I would like to. Um, there's a lot of steps between me and that happening. 
that I need to overcome. And it just always feels like there's something more stressful and more important happening first that we need to get through. And then it keeps on just like not happening. You know what I'm sick of with renting is leasing. That's uh, cheating, you should use your hands. What, the bread machine? Oh, absolutely. Need a bread machine cam. Let me see. I don't know if I can reach far enough. This can come to about here. Yeah, no, I can't do it. That's gonna be dangerous. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break something if I try to do that. Um, here, here, what I'll do, I know what I'll do, is I have a phone, and I can go here. So, it's, it's, it's pulling away from the sides a little better. Here, I'm gonna take a little video for the story. So if you have Instagram on, um, I'm Hazel Nutty Life on Instagram. If you check my story, there's a little, there's a little video of the, uh, of the bread maker making its little, little spooky baby. Oh, Hazel, do you have anxiety? Everybody's got anxiety. Uh, can I steal a spotlight? Clean my apartment down to the smallest detail today. So nice to sit here, look around me now. I demand a thumbs up, two thumbs up. I'm a little, I'm very happy and I'm a little jealous. It's like the best feeling when you get everything super clean. I kind of want to do another, there's a plug coming out of my cover. I kind of want to do another um, deep clean of my, of my cabinets. Like just do inventory on my food and like rethink my food storage. Cause there's a couple shelves that are just kind of messy because that's the best way I've figured out to store the stuff that's in them. And I could probably stand to get rid of a few more things. Dancing does, that's kind of cool. Anything that can be done by hand in four hours is worth automating to do in two. There are certainly things that are lost when you make bread in a machine as opposed to doing it by hand. I just don't miss them especially much. <laughs> oh boy. I really don't know what to do with this. <laughs> this is the, that, that pile of awful candy corn candy. It's kind of nauseating. I think I'm gonna like top the thing with like one of them for the picture and then I'm going to immediately remove it. <laughs> and throw it out. Yeah, just just give up. I knew when I bought it that it was probably going to be gross and I was probably not going to be able to keep it. But I had to, I couldn't leave there without trying. At least the other at least the other candy is like normal candy. It's like got peanut butter cups and some stuff I can eat. Need your Twitch but not need your content. Love your new tats by the way. Thank you, Donix. They're not great. They're not great. No. They're it's cheap candy corn candy, so it's it was never supposed to be good. But you know what else? While I'm while I am complaining, I was in the store looking for, I needed um, chocolate graham crackers to crush because I'm gonna layer them with the pudding. And that's another thing I could do now. I think they might get stale if I do them now, but um, I'm gonna have to do some animal graham violence uh, at some point. Wake up Tink, thank you for the five month resub. Also Purple Van with a brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. I also missed one from Krishna with a brand new sub a couple minutes ago, thank you very much. I've been playing WoW for about 10 years. I would say that sounds about right. Maybe more, maybe like 11, 12, 11. I think I started playing in 09. So I am on my way back. I got chocolate animals because um, I'm, I needed to get chocolate graham cracker crumbs and or like crushed chocolate grams. And I figured I could just, you know, animal graham cracker violence. I'll try one of these and find out if they're any good. But while I was in the animal shaped cracker aisle, I was like, you know what I haven't had in a really long time are regular animal crackers. Like the, the brand name ones that are like the arrowroot crackers of my childhood. They weren't good and I remember that they weren't good, but I miss them and I'm going to have them. So I bought, uh, we usually keep snacks up there. I move them for the stream so you guys think I'm less messy than I actually am. I don't know why. Uh, I got a box of Barnum Animals Crackers, like the regular brand of them. And I brought them home and I had some last night and I ate one and I'm like, that's not right. And then I went and checked the ingredients and it's not an arrowroot cracker anymore. It's just like an oil and sugar wheat based cracker. It's like just a, it's just like a terrible cookie. It's, it's like, I know it wasn't good before, <laughs> but I, I wasn't expecting it to be good, but I was expecting it to be the thing that I wanted and it let me down and I am deeply upset. So these, is this supposed, do you guys think this is, this is a rhinoceros, right? My first thought was elephant, but I think that's a rhino. I 
I just hate stuff today. <laughs> I just have a hateful spirit in me. I need, I need like a good exorcism or a bubble bath or something. I'm not good. I'm gonna finish eating it, but no, I'm not. You know what? No, I'm not. It'll be fine for the purpose. Oh no, I didn't even throw it away properly. Oh, it'll be fine for the purpose of it. That's not good. It tastes like a rhino. It tastes like sadness. Hi. Um, yeah, cleanse the palate. <laughs> Played WoW for 15 years, got bored for the first time, quit in BFA. Does the X-Pack seem good for returning? I think so. But, you know, people will get bored and quit for all kinds of reasons. They tend to be very personal. So I think only you can decide that. What I would do is I would wait a little bit longer and then come back for a week or so, or like a month, I guess one month worth of sub in pre-patch once we get that pre-patch event going. Because the Scourge event hasn't started yet, but you can come back and pre-patch and try the level squish, try the class changes. I think the class changes are going to be the big thing because the content is content. You know, dungeons and raids are always going to be dungeons and raids. But if you like how your class plays, then you're probably going to like the expansion. Okay. Nothing to do in pre-patch. If you don't care about alts, there is nothing to do. If you like leveling, then you can keep yourself busy for a while. Red Maker video is hypnotizing. Favorite recipe from the WoW cookbook? There's one for firecracker salmon that's really good. It's like a marinated salmon that you broil. Um, this recipe is really good. And then the one that I'm making in the bread maker right now, the Melgore spice bread is really good. But there's, I don't think I've really tried any recipes from this book that have turned out badly. They're all, they're all good. Um, those are just like the right mix of easy and achievable enough ingredients. And they turn out well enough that, um, and that I feel like I can do them. Uh, how do you like doing collecting content in WoW? Very much. I, I, I wish I could enter a pocket dimension where time was immaterial and I had no needs nor responsibilities so I could just collect everything because checking off the checklist is extremely satisfying. Um, I'm, I'm a recent all the things addict and I'm having a great time. <laughs> like the Alliance apron, you need some horde oven mist to appease both factions. I don't know if I do. I'm just, I'm just an Alliance player, you know? It's not that we're anti-Horde. It's not that I don't like the Horde. I have Horde alts, but, you know, in your heart of hearts, sometimes you just pick a side. <laughs> some, some, some people are just Alliance. Uh, I need to get those allied races unlocked. I have many alts that I can start a guild called the Alt Guild. Oh, man. So I am actually going to wrap up early for the day. I... If I keep standing out here, I'm just going to keep checking for birds and then not seeing birds and then being like, where are my birds? Uh, I, got, I got some stuff to get to, but I will update you tomorrow. We have a stream tomorrow in the morning, and at that time, I shall present to you the finished glassed pudding serving. Maybe a little one. Do I, maybe I'll have like a shot glass. I can do a mini one in, and we will, do a, we will do a live taste test tomorrow. I can also show you the bread. That'll go well with my chocolate beer pudding. And, uh, and, then, and then we'll do an update time. But in the meantime, thank you all very much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow morning starting at 10 a.m. Pacific, which I believe is like 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, thank you all so much, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. Leaving sounds.